We are live on DSTV, Channel 41, Go TV 144. This is Johnny's Prime with me, Ernest Menu. Our top stories this are the strike by the Ghana Union of Traders Association is in full force with a ripple effect on other businesses. We'll gauge how far reaching this is as the producer price index hits 45.5%. We cannot, we cannot buy our stuff. When we go and import, it's very high. The money is too high. The money is too high. I have resigned from the NPP. Nominee to the Supreme Court, Justice Gehu tells Parliament Appointments Committee as he's grilled for his affiliation to the governing party. Luckily, I'm not a member of the NPP for now. I'm no, I'm no longer a member of the NPP. I've sworn a judicial oath to do to all manner of person justice. That is all. We have details as the minority leader says his appointment gives an indication the president is parking the courts with partisan persons. Men such as yours give the notion of uh, partisanship creeping into appointments into the high office of the uh, uh, Supreme Court. In our latest edition of Johnny Tracker, we take you to La, where the people are wondering whether President Okufuado intends to keep his promise to reconstruct the La General Hospital by February 2023. Cutting for the MPP government is a fan phase. I remember they went to one of the districts. The chief didn't allow them to cut the sword because I'm sure he's seen a lot of sword cutting with nothing being done. And now the people are very desperate. But we, the people of the Kotopo, are telling them that this land is for the general hospital and so shall it be. And as President Ikufado's public utterances continue to generate controversy, we bring you a news that reports chronicling some of his remarks that have heavily been criticized. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going Many thanks for choosing us. I am Ernest Menu. They vowed to shut down and they, they have done just that. The busy, vibrant Accra district was today a pale shadow of itself. Scores of shops closed in compliance with a resolution passed by the Ghana Union of Traders Association. The group described the industrial action, which will end Monday, October 24, as a pinch on government to urgently address the depreciating city, high interest rate and inflation. The association has, among other things, called on the government to ascertain the factors leading to the excessive demand for the dollar while reviewing investment laws to retain forex and push foreign investors into productive sectors of the economy. Bernice Abubedu was in town to gauge the level of compliance and as she reports, the action was in full force with a ripple effect on other businesses. What do you sell here? I sell dryers and uh, salon equipment. So are these locally manufactured or imported? Imported. So when maybe somebody, a customer came and you give him their price today, tomorrow when the price is up, now the dollar is almost 13 cents. So we can sell. How long have you been doing this business and have you come across any situation like this before? Oh, I started this business almost 20, 30 years. Now we haven't faced this type of economy before. Because even last four or five years, the dollar was almost getting to four something. But now, we don't understand. So. What do you think about what they're saying? Right now your shop is closed, you're not making any money, you're not making any profit. Well, was, For well, five days, well, won't that affect the you? Shop. There's no market. We come and sit down from late, early in the morning to evening. There's no market. So it's like, like uh, you can face the problem uh, unless the problem solved. Uh, that's why we are here. It will be good to find somebody who's come here to buy something and has met a shop closed. Found somebody who's here to shop. Hello, what's your name? My name is Agbe. Agbe, yes. what did you come here to buy? Electricals. And, Electrical materials. And you're disappointed because the shops are closed? Seriously. Didn't you hear about this in the news? No, it was this morning I heard it on news. I thought it's a joke. But when I came, truly, truly, what I want to buy to go and work, I couldn't get a thing. Meanwhile, Things that we normally buy. Previously, that was last month. We bought. I bought a 1.5 cable. That's 200 Ghana. Today, they haven't opened shop, but they are telling me 
One coil is 240 Ghana. Where are we going? Now, at Abuso, can I trade as obliged with a directive? This is what my colleague Samuel Kujobre is captured. So I'm here in Abosokai. If you look right behind me, that stretch, about 500 meters from here, we've been walking from that point to this place. I mean, all the stores on that lane have been closed. None of them has been opened. Um, a look ahead of me still indicates that stores here, I can see about 100 meters ahead of me, and all the stores have been closed. None has been open. Again, we see a lot of people here, but for them to open the stores, that is a big no. Let's try and engage some of them to really understand what is happening. You've shut your stores, but you are here. What's right. happening? Uh, oh, it's about the dollar. The dollar is going up too much. Perhaps by the end of this year, it will go about 20 per one dollar, which is too much. We cannot trade. We cannot, we cannot buy our stuff. When we go and import it's very high. The money is too high. The money is too high. So the government should do something about it. That's why we're closing our shop today. Is it only about a dollar or there's something else? Oh, taxes are too much too. Okay. When you import to Ghana, the taxes are too much. They should do something about it. Okay. Now, you've closed your stores, but you are here. Why are you here? Oh, we are here to, I mean, to, super, to, protect, super, our to protect our shop and supervise our business, our stores too. Uh, I think it's a good exercise that we are taking. I think the dollar uh, is rising too much and it is, I mean, affecting the cost of doing business because right now the dollar is almost about 13 cities. So that means that the quantum of the money that you used to buy some, let's say, three months ago, if you have to change into the dollar and go and buy again, you're definitely it will come down. And then much more stores, man. Yes, of course. And I'm, I'm not sure you are reopening today. You open on Monday. Nah, this is my shop. Oh, you have opened? Yeah. Why? Because I know it's not need for me to close the shop. Oh, okay. Because if we close it, it won't solve the problem. Okay. Because if the, uh, the, the importers go for the goods, if you are going to buy, they put their interest on it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to buy, I said they will give me the, this thing, the difference. Mm -hmm. I have to pay. So it's not need for me to close. Okay. Because you can we put the difference on it and take it from me. Okay. I mean, wherever we've been to, the sentiment is one. The fact that the economy is in shambles and government has to do something about it because the impact on their businesses is too huge. This road I'm standing on, I'm told, on a normal day, this place should be filled with uh, thick traffic. But that is not the case because the shops have closed. And there were reports of harassment of some traders who sat out of the strike. Some of them say they are not members of Guta and others actually uh, do not believe that the strike is the way to go. But Guta says the claims of harassment are false and the strike on day one has been successful. Dr. Joseph Obin is national president. It's a huge institution. Guta, our business. Guta, our business. Guta, our business. So... We are not in competition with anybody. anybody. Some people want to ride at the back of Guta to make themselves relevant. And so we do not go chasing. You've been here and you've seen it yourself. The closure is total. Hey, let me tell you, this even, the even, the even Christmas, go to the market, Christmas where we are everywhere. supposed to eat biscuits, um, kill chickens and eat and all that, people will even come and open shops. Even holidays, that is clear by government. So in any situation, you see some remnant. So, Dr. Ben, what is the IGP asking you to do? I mean, why is he here particularly? What did he make? What demands did he make on you? IGP came to praise us because he said that he's even surprised that such a massive closure, there's no iota of incidents anywhere. And that we prove that we are matured and you want us to sustain that and that we don't have any conflict with anybody. Let not anybody deceive anybody that some people are um, uh, preventing them to open their shops. They don't have members. members. And some of the issues raised there by the uh, traders include the high cost of doing business, uh, which is emanating from 
you know, the production houses. Isaac Ufeje joins me in the studio with the latest figures on our producer price index for the month of September. Isaac, uh, what is the, uh, the, the latest from the Ghana Statistical Service? Right, so and as we've seen, that producer price index has now crossed, you know, from 38%, now moving around to 45.6%. This simply mm -hmm. means that, you know, the cost of production or the cost of goods and services at the warehouse are currently now very expensive. So it simply means if you are buying an expensive good at the warehouse, it means retailers are also going to sell uh, mm. to consumers at a higher cost. But we also want to chronicle this for you to see, we, we've been speaking about the CD and exchange rates. So we want to tell you at what point the CD cross a certain discrete mark. So like we've been saying the CD will break the eight, CD will break the eight. So it's, it's broken the seven, the eight, nine, 10 is now approaching you know, 13. So we want to chronicle this for you. So we start off, you know, the beginning of the year, you could exchange um, one dollar for six CDs and some few pesos. Then we see uh, that, you know, on February 18, 2022, this year, the CD broke the seven mark. It moved from six CDs, you know, and some few pesos now to seven CDs. You know, people were trading, you know, one one dollar to more than seven CDs. It broke, you know, the seven CD mark on 18th um, February. 2022. Then the much anticipated breaking the eight happened on March 22nd when we saw the CD moving from the seven CD zone now to one dollar to eight CDs on you know 22nd March 2022. Then you know some few months down the line uh, we saw the CD breaking the nine. Mm. They moved from eight now to nine on the ninth. Uh, of October 2022. But so, Kofi, I see something there. I mm. see that between March and August, I mean, so mm. there was some stability, you'd exactly. say, exactly. over the period. But then exactly. it shot very quickly in, in August. So this was a period where we, we started having the 750 million, you know, Afri Exim Bank loan. Mm -hmm. We also were talking about, you know, some 250 million loan in Parliament that we never got. That mm -hmm. we're also expecting. Uh, the the 1.135 billion cocoa syndicated loan and the much anticipated mm. and I must say I, even the mayor announcement by the mm. BOG obviously had an impact on the market exactly and then we also saw you know the 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 policy rates also being hiked yeah. right from March there having an effect on the stability of the city in this period but the city broke the eight on you know August 9, 2022 let's look at breaking the ten breaking the ten happened. On 19th, you know, August 2022. Same month. That's same month. Ten days later, we saw the CD moving from the nine CD zone now to the ten CD zone in just ten days. That's a high depreciation from nine CDs to ten CDs in ten days in the same month. Then we broke the 11 mark from ten CDs to 11, 11 CDs. That was from 19th, um, you know, August now to eight. Uh, October 2022, this year. Then what do we see? In a few months later, some few days later, we saw that the CD has now crossed uh, from 11 CDs now to 12 CDs on 14th you know, October, this same month. So we've seen this same month, the CD has fluctuated three times. It has moved from, you know, 11, from 10 CDs in October, to, in August, to 11 CDs in um, October 8th, then to 12 CDs. And now we see the CD appreciated, you know, approaching the 13 CD mark in the same month. And so, and as it uh, is quite worrying, especially worrying. when uh, we had actually thought the currency analysts had predicted that it will end the year at 12. And here we are uh, yeah, seeing already yeah. that it's of crossed course. the 12 mark. Let's go to uh, Zoom now and speak to Dr. Joseph Obey, his president of Guta. Mr. Obey, thank you very much for your time here on Join News Prime. Uh, and so, uh, what will be your assessment of day one? I'm sure you had uh, the, a few of uh, the traders there who thought that this is not the way to go, even though they agree uh, with the basis for which you resolved to take this action. Yeah, um, everybody has gotten this right. Um, the people who told us that they want to close their shops, they make a definite statement. And that's what you saw in the markets today. Um, if even we, uh, there's a public holiday, you realize
You'd have to unmute uh, so we can hear you. We just had a little fluctuation there. It wasn't from... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I can hear you now. It, it, uh, so, um, it's a phone. So, another call comes. So, I'm very sorry. Yeah. But um, what you saw in the market is a, a, a true statement of what is worrying the people... The genocide, when there was a public holiday, you see people who will still defy the public holiday and go and uh, do some of these things. So when we are uh, closing our shops, we give about 5% um, off the mark. We have a, a success rate of about 93%. It's okay. And then there are other requests, etc. Even on Christmas, where people are carrying flowers to eat and all that, so people. So, so um, I think the statement that we made is what is necessary, and we've made it and made it loud. Has there so been we, any uh, attempt, Dr. Obain, from government today uh, to try and stop this action, to get you to rescind the decision, and perhaps gather around the table again and negotiate? Yeah, um, Mr. Beffy has called me a couple of times. Um, what he has not done is to uh, 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 be able to call us. And the statement is so clear that we are giving a pinch to government um, to, t uh, to take a sense of urgency, to make a sense of urgency in the situation, what we find ourselves in. And that statement has gone to government so loud and clear. And so that is enough So uh, for government to work on it. We told you we also want to communicate to the general consuming public that we are not the cause of price hikes mm -hmm. in the market. I, I just heard and you, Dr. Obin, say the message has been drummed home and that is enough. Does that suggest that uh, you are considering uh, ending the strike and not going the full, no, I mean, the long haul, the six days? Please don't make that inference. Don't make that inference, please. If you do that, it, it might disturb the mind of people. So please, you have to uh, reframe what you are saying. Because so, you ask me, you ask me whether uh, the authorities have talked with us. Then I'm saying that we are making a statement. Because as for authorities, we always go to them. Yes, but the, the point I was making is that if the statement has been accepted and it's it been drowned home, then I guess your point has been made and we can all move on. But Dr. Obin, the connection to you is not really great, uh, but I understand you'll be on PM Express and so we'll continue uh, at 9 p.m. You want to join Dr. Joseph Obin at 9 p.m. with Aisha Ibrahim on PM Express, away from the issues of trading. In August 2020, the people of La were thrown into a state of excitement when President Ikufuado cut salt for the construction of an ultra-modern hospital to replace the La General Hospital. The hospital, estimated at 68 million euros, is scheduled for completion in February 2023. But 26 months into the 30 months construction timeline, the project has not yet begun. Residents are angry and they are wondering whether the president still intends to keep his promise. Jojo Kobna has more in this edition of the Johnny Tracker. Times are wasting, times are wasting. You've got work to do. In 2019, the government of Ghana pulled down the La General Hospital in the La Dadekotopon constituency in Accra because it had structural defects. The plan was to build an ultra-modern hospital for the people of La and also to serve other neighboring communities. At the sword-cutting ceremony, the traditional priest praised the government for this laudable project. <laughs> This redevelopment project is being financed by a credit facility from the Standard Chartered Bank of the United Kingdom with an export credit guarantee from Sinoshore of the People's Republic of China to the tune of 68 million euros with an insurance cover 
of 3,860,000 euros. With the land already available for construction, the government estimated that the project will be completed in 30 months. The project, which was supposed to begin in August 2020, should be completed in February 2023. In the 26th month of the supposed construction timeline, which is October 2022, we flew a drone over the facility and it showed that the construction had not yet begun. Even the foundation has not been completed. On one side of the construction site, soil has been heaped and some workers had planted vegetables. We see here the yellow melon. That's what they started planting. We have okra too. When you go down there, there is maize. And so they are gradually, gradually turning it into a farm. In 2021, the health minister, Kweku Achiman Menu, informed parliament the government was working on insurance coverage for the project before work would commence. The contractor is insisting that not until Sandwisho issues the insurance cover, they cannot move to site. And therefore, finance minister has been informed they are engaging. And the indication is that that problem will soon be resolved. And um, since the ministry does not control that activity, it will be difficult for me to give a very specific point in time. All I can say is that it will be very soon. In February of this year, the health minister again explained that the project had been delayed due to COVID-19 and other factors. He promised that work would start soon. We went through regulatory processes, but we faced challenges with COVID and some insurance challenges in China that stopped us from working. Now they are back on site, but because of the lockdowns and travel restrictions and so many things, even those who were giving us the money to come to the bankers were not going to work outside, not only here in our country. So that has slowed down our activities. The Member of Parliament for La Dadekotopong, Rita Odole Soan, visited the construction site to monitor the progress of work. She's not surprised that the work has not begun yet, but she's however disappointed. I think salt cutting for the MPP government is a fun phase. I remember they went to one of the districts. The chief didn't allow them to cut the salt because I'm sure he's seen a lot of salt cutting with nothing being done. And now the people are very desperate. But we, the people of the Kotopo, are telling them that this land is for the general hospital and so shall it be. Richard Tay is a taxi driver who lives in the South La Estate. He was excited about the construction of the hospital. He witnessed the sword cutting ceremony and hoped the La community will get a modern health facility. However, his frequent visits to the site revealed no activity. He no longer visits the site because he's broken hearted. <laughs> To me, uh, it's, it's a disappointment. The promises never fake. Uh, the, the legacy, the, the mindset. No money, or even drunk, the pony no more. A bath, no one can was a poor. We work at Shit, you know, work at Kyle. And I'm very disappointed. He prayed why the building was pulled down when the government was not prepared to start construction. You 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 be roaming. You know there's a vacancy. And then that is it. Ghana, we are suffering now. It is very hard to to make ends meet. I mean, as a family man, to survive, it's, it's not easy at all. What kind of country are we running in? Many president crying. In small girl, po okay in Hale. Sword, if I cut sword, be no, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, cut sword, so yeah. If that is a thing, I mean, sword, I'm a cut sword, be an air. Margaret Abbey and her friend just returned from the police hospital for a health checkup. Both of them have been battling high blood pressure. Before the Lagino hospital was pulled down, they used to go there for health care, but now they go to the police hospital. They are pleading with government to speed up the hospital's construction. Mm -hmm. 
Auntie Jomo is also upset with the government for keeping them in the dark about why the project has delayed. She says because residents are vested in the project's success, the government owes them updates. New way hospital. Yella ne obaku. Ofe no kodokodoko nyoma. Onye shika no kabama. Akufadu. Ma bo fio wanake. O baka wa vote wa hambu. She wa tisikasu. For the time being, residents of Lamami seek medical attention at the La Polyclinic. According to health workers, the facility is too small for the explosive population. Besides that, the facility closes at 8 p.m. So if residents become ill at night, they must go to the police hospital, Lekma Hospital, Ridge Hospital, Rita Odole Soa claims she has attempted several times to obtain information on why construction has been delayed. But all of the responses she has received have been unconvincing. If they've been able to contract the loan, the loan should speak on the ground here. And so for me, I believe they've not been able to contract the loan. They told lies even to Parliament that the loan was ready and Parliament approved it. And so if the loan, they received the money, where is the money? And if not, what, are, what plans have they put in place to get money for the construction of the hospital? As the tide continues to lash the coastline and recede, Time is running out and residents are eager to see their hospital completed. Jojo Kobner, Joy News Tracker. President Okufado has been in the news this week for some of his comments. Features editor Jojo Kobner has more on the president's past and recent speeches that have been heavily criticized. <laughs> The Bible said, I'm not mine. I can't say I'm coming through here. I feel I am pregnant, son. I pray, baby. I slam on. I'm not for. I'm not for my work day. I'm not for my time. In 2016, the presidential candidate for the new patriotic party, Nana Kufado, begged voters to vote for him. He emphasized that the people have a lot of power so he will always beg them. He criticized President Mahama for ridiculing him for pleading with voters. The people were persuaded and voted for him in 2016. He went on to win the 2020 elections as well. The public has been anxiously anticipating the fulfillment of all promises made to them. Many citizens have made demands. This includes Aplau Chief Togbi Anyafiti V, who gave the Education Ministry an ultimatum to complete the e block school in Aplau. I carry this message to the Minister of uh, Education that come February. I want this school to be open. Yes, February. First batch. This ultimatum generated a response from the president when he was interviewed by PCFM morning show host Kwame Sefakai. Uh, I want to say that the e-block is not going to be open. In the education minister to February, he said, I'm going to be it's on the on a normal minister ultimate. So I swear bread, I swear bread. This response generated intense criticisms. To speak up the way to me it is spoke up. He has my respect. That is what chiefs must do. So I don't think that the president should be defending or his people should be defending his remark. It was poor, it was not well cal calibrated. So let's get it right. Our politicians are leading us into all kinds of promises which create these problems. The people of Kwabre and Manso in the Ashanti region have also been demanding their share of good roads. 
President Akufuado has an answer for the people of Kwabre in Mansung. Critics are concerned about the president's posture, but could it be that the pressure of numerous demands is getting to him? Or is it that the president will not be on the ballot in the 2024 elections, so has nothing to lose? No problem. You do yeah. it. I'm saying, people make those kind of threats. Me, they don't frighten me. Okay. It's, yeah, somebody votes for you, somebody uh, supports you. It's because they want you to do things for them. So I understand that. Uh, there's no need for people to go to man, yeah, say the same. I don't want to say it. To me. Of course, I'm here. And I'm about to say, I'm about to say, who decided 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 to say, the important thing is that we have a response. I understand the responsibility and we will deal with it. Fantastic. Right. Well, this discussion can continue in your various homes and offices. Jojo Kobna, Joy News. This is Joy News Prime with me and Esmino. Still to come, I have resigned from the NPP nominee to the Supreme Court, Justice Gaul tells Parliament's Appointments Committee as he is grilled for his affiliation to the governing party. Like I'm not a member of the NPP for now. I'm no, I'm no longer a member of the MPP. I've sworn a judicial oath to do the law manner of facing justice. That is all. Hello, many thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime with me, Ernest Minu. The nominee, a nominee to the Supreme Court, Justice Ernest Yao Gil, says he has resigned from the new patriotic party and will apply the law fairly. Ernest Yao Gil served as the NPP's parliamentary candidate for the whole central constituency in the 2016 election. He was appointed to the High Court in 2020 and has now been nominated to the Supreme Court by President Ikufuado. Minority leader Harina Jesus says the appointment suggests the president is appointing partisan persons to the Supreme Court. Parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asante reports. So it's been a tale of two vettings. The first vetting of Justice Esiedu Adibo mainly focused on legal education in the country as well as other reforms of the judiciary. Indeed, the member of parliament for Medina, Francis Xavier Sosu, had been asking questions regarding some undertaking that the General Legal Council has asked students who are seeking to enter the Ghana Law School should be signed in, whether or not it's legal at all. Well, the justice has been given an answer that if such students are dissatisfied, they can head on to the Supreme Court or any other court of competent jurisdiction and get some answers. As for the measures which have been introduced by the General Legal Council, in respect of whether a student has a right to, you know, ask for a marking or what have you, that does not stop any student, in my view, from going to court to seek redress. The veteran of High Court Judge, Justice Gaiwu, who has been nominated to go onto the Supreme Court, has mainly focused on his affiliation to the ruling New Patriotic Party. In 2016, he served as the NPP parliamentary candidate for the whole central constituency. According to Minority Leader, his appointment signals President Ekufuado's intention and his plans to pack the court, the Supreme Court of Partisans. Having been appointed a judge at the High Court, just at the beginning of a career, you are elevated and fast-tracked ahead of your superiors from the same High Court through the Appeals Court to the Court of Appeal, and Chairman, let it be said on authority that the, we have expressed to the Supreme Court, we have expressed concern that that can be a disincentive to other judges who have played their part in public service to serve our country in that capacity at High Court who are not being recognized. So, because in your CV, you indicate that uh, you ran for the new patriotic party 
as parliamentary candidate in 2016, then there from there onwards to high court judge, then to the Supreme Court. That is not to say that we haven't had instances where somebody serving a political party have been appointed into the Supreme Court. But the appointments such as yours give the notion of uh, partisanship creeping into appointments into the high office of the uh, uh, Supreme Court. But Justice Gayou says, no, that is not the case. And that before he was appointed onto the high court, he resigned from the New Patriotic Party. Luckily, I'm not a member of the MPP for now. I'm no, I'm no longer a member of the MPP. I've sworn a judicial oath to do to all manner of facing justice. That is all. My Lord, if I'm impaneled, and to the extent that, well, it will conflict with my ideas, I may ask to be recused. As a which party will you vote tomorrow? <laughs> the nominee just told us he's not a member of the MPP. When did you resign from the MPP? Or have you resigned from the MPP? And when? This is your fourth question. I ceased to become a member of the MPP on the 16th day of um, September 2020, the year 2020. Yes, I, I resigned. That's a formal resignation, and it was received and signed by the party. Well, the NDC MPs on the committee have still been pressing whether or not he will be fair to NDC if they ever appear before him at the Supreme Court. This is the last batch of nominees who have been vetted to go on to the Supreme Court yesterday. Akayensu was also vetted, as well as Justice George Kinsley Kumsen. The committee will wrap up this work and it's expected that when Parliament resumes next week, they will present their report. It is not clear yet whether the NDC MPs on the appointment committee will be voting to approve particularly Justice Gaiwu. My name is Kweku Asante from Parliament House in Accra for Joy News. Winning or losing the election doesn't change your membership in the National Democratic Congress. The words of encouragement from party leadership to all aspirants contesting for constituency executive positions in the opposition party. The NDC is devoting the last few months of the year to party reorganization. General Secretary Johnson has said in KT affirms that the election for the constituency level is slated for the 22nd and 23rd of October. He is cautioning all party members to carry out the exercise in a peaceful manner. On behalf of the Functional Executive Committee, we want to reaffirm the election dates for constituency elections throughout the country, safe selected constituencies which will be communicated to the regional executive committees. All the other elections at constituency level will be conducted um, on 22nd and 23rd, that is the coming Sunday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. A few constituencies have applied for some variation in how their elections ought to be conducted. That because of the nature of the weather these days, the rainy season and so on, the flooding and so on, so there are a lot of places in some of the constituencies uh, which are which have made which are inaccessible to, uh, from the constituency capital. And so such constituencies have made arrangements to decentralize their elections to the world level so that they will do the elections in clusters. About five constituencies have been given special dispensation to uh, do that. Let me refer you to Article 15 of the party's constitution. And it provides for the holding of a constituency conference. There shall be a constituency conference
held every four years to elect party officers at a venue within the constituency. I repeat, there shall be a constituency conference held every four years to elect party officers at a venue within the constituency. So all things being equal, the conference must happen at a venue within the constituency. There are occasions where we can direct the conference to be held elsewhere. But normally, without any difficulty, it must be held at a venue within the constituency. Number two, the constituency conference shall be convened by the chairman of the constituency executive committee in consultation with the executive uh, the constituency executive. The chairman is the one who will call the conference. But he doesn't do it alone. He has no power to just detect that I am the chairman, so this is where I want it to be held. He must have the concurrence of the executive at the constituency level. There are people who would want to locate the conferences in inaccessible areas to serve a particular interest. Please try and avoid that. There are areas where intentionally people want to locate these conferences at places where there is even no network, so that when there is any confusion, nobody can call anybody. Please try and avoid that. And it's now time for the National Science and Maths Quiz. Uh, this afternoon, Prempe College, the reigning champions, uh, qualified to the uh, semi-final stage of the competition after beating Maoli SHS and Ibri Presby SHTS. There's been wild jubilation after that. Let's cross over now to Kumasi Maxwell and has been engaged in some of them. tell you is to just book a place in the final for Prempe College. Okay. Because like we told you in the beginning, that this thing is just a conversation for us. Like, you can't contest with the GOAT, Lionel himself, and think you are going to win. 
show working. Bro, show working. Show working. Show working. Show working. And yeah, Casa. This year, Science and Mass Quiz is a back to back to back Science and Mass Quiz. We have a former guy. Listen, listen carefully. We have a former guy called Terminator. That guy, next two years. Yes. And then the first, the first, who are going to form three now? Yes. 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 Okay, so that's it. Uh, Premier College has qualified. Let me speak to another old student here. Um, tell me, what is the feeling like for you? What's the feeling like? Uh, well, to, to be honest, to be honest with you, it's it's very calm. Yeah, it's, it's a very calm atmosphere out here. It's it's nothing that we've not seen before. And, and it's, 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 it's just it's just a normal NSMQ print perfume. Nothing too special, nothing too big, nothing to boast about. It's just the normal standard of print Because there's one thing that always we are in our school. And like when you are walking around, one thing that you hear is, this is print perfume. And did every um, president senior high technical school scale? Uh, okay, so let me tell you one thing I do about about when I'm coming to approach my contest. I never watch anybody's contest. Because if Prempe has its A game on the ground, nobody, I mean nobody, nobody. can nobody. stand against the standard. If Prempe brings its A game, nobody. So I've not seen any of them in any of their contests. And I'll never see anybody's contest. I'll be here bottling on Sunday for the semi-finals without watching anybody's contest. Because we had stories and I came around and all of that. But one thing I'll say once again is this. Is this is Premper College. Let me talk to you, uh, a past contestant from Benkum Senior High School 2015. He's a doctor at the Teaching Hospital. He's been following the NSMQ keenly. Tell me, uh, are you surprised? Premper College in the semi finals. Are you surprised with the are, are you surprised by the performance? Um, with the performance of Ibri? Oh, it was expected because I think uh, in one of the trial contests in Premier College, uh, every secondary technical beats Premier College during their preparations. So in this contest, oh, really? we are watching out for every secondary technical. Okay. Unlike Maoli, yeah. because uh, they are preliminary contest, they are not really um, impressive. Just that during the one day stage, they beat Wesley girls and they had a hype and all that. Yes. Once again, I told you that Premier College has. A package for Maoli. Okay. And you see that nice package. And yeah. now Premier Kelly has a trait of champions. Yeah. They are coming as a defending champion. And in this contest, they were trailing in round one. And you know, round one is a signature for Premier College in this contest. But they trailed in round one by six points. And they catched up during the round two. And the true or false, they did well. And I told you before. Uh, this whole competition that whenever Premier College has a smooth true or false in the contest, they end up getting to the finals. So I'm, I'm tipping them for great, as I say every time. But uh, the semi final will be a must watch between Abetifi and Fan Supreme School and Premier College. Okay. So, so, so let me ask the question again Are you shocked by the performance of every Presbyterian High Technical School? I'm not shocked. They are good. You're not shocked, You're not shocked by their performance? I'm not shocked. They are very good. Okay. They are very good. That's it for our package uh, for you for tonight. Uh, check out some more stories on myjoinline.com.